let us see next question explain traditional theory I request all of you to pay attention to understand the concept of the traditional theory. Dear students, as far as the traditional theory is concerned, it has a kind of conclusion like this. Everybody please pay attention. It has a conclusion like this. As far as the introduction of the debt financing is concerned, introduction of debt financing is concerned, it is divided into three stages stage one, stage two, and stage three. Like that, it is divided into three stages. This theory says that say, of course, there is an advantage of raising the debt financing in terms of trading on equity, in terms of raising a fund which is having lower cost. And there is a cost associated to it in terms of increase in the cost of equity. This theory says that initially what would happen? Initially, when you raise the debt financing, in that case, the advantage that you have is more in comparison to the cost. Advantage that you have is more in comparison to the cost. So, initially, it is like this. So, during initial stage, when you raise the debt financing, that gives an advantage to you in terms of reducing the weighted average cost of capital. That gives an advantage to you in terms of increasing the value of the firm. That is what it says. If you raise the debt financing further, then in that case, what will happen? In the secondary stage, when you raise the debt financing, the advantage is equal to the cost. Yes, it has a kind of opinion that so the advantage and the cost will be same. On one hand, you have an advantage of raising the lower cost of the funds and trading on equity. But on the other hand, cost of equity also increases. So during secondary stage, both of them will remain same. Now this is the point at which you should stop raising the debt financing. If at all you continue to raise further debt financing, then in that case, now it will have an adverse impact. What kind of adverse impact that it will have? The cost will be more than the advantage. And in that case, weighted average cost of capital will start moving up. In that case, value of the firm will start moving down. This is what's going to take place, say, in the third stage. This is what the theory says. I just request you to write down this summary and then so I'll dictate a note to you. So now I'm dictating a note to you. Uh, write down answer. First point. As per this theory, introduction of debt financing will have an advantage of reducing WACC initially full stop
second point raising further debt finance will have no impact on WACC and value of firm full stop during this time both of them will remain same full stop at this point of time the company should stop raising additional debt finance third point if company raises further debt finance comma in that case weighted average cost of capital will fall down and uh, i'm sorry will increase and uh, value of firm will fall down full stop so in in the diagram we will have on x axis debt financing in capital structure and on y axis we will have cost of capital this same friends there is a slight difference in the diagram when there is no debt financing k and weighted average cost of capital is same when you introduce the debt financing cost of equity increases like this this time they have a point that say even the cost of debt financing will increase so it goes like this in a way that say you already have leverage and you further introduce leverage then the next financer will expect more return from you this is practically correct now the important point is like this initially weighted average cost of capital will fall down then for some time it will remain same this red line and then again it will start moving up like this this is weighted average cost of capital i request you to draw the diagram